the list of upcoming movies has been shaken up a bit, to put it extremely mildly. After cinemas around the world were forced to close due to the coronavirus pandemic, studios came to terms with an unprecedented crisis, and began scrambling to reschedule the dates for 2020 movie releases. Most films due for release this year were pushed back to the latter half of the year, with some being pushed as far as back as 2021. So what are the most highly anticipated movies of the year? Despite having to wait a little longer to see them, there is still an array of exciting new movies to look forward to this year, when Irish cinemas reopen on 20 July. We've managed to whittle it down to 10 of the most highly anticipated. The list includes a probable final outing from Daniel Craig as James Bond, an X-Men spin-off that has been delayed by over two years, and the new Christopher Nolan flick. Below, we take a more detailed look at the biggest releases coming in 2020 and beyond. Candyman. Candyman. The urban legend is, if you say his name five times while looking in the mirror, he appears in the reflection. Say his name five times in the mirror and the Candyman will appear. Well, Jordan Peele has done exactly that, and will be bringing the results to cinemas. This spiritual successor to the original movie will be directed by Nia DaCosta, and has Peele on as producer. Tony Todd returns as the eponymous ghost looking to wreak havoc. The movie will also introduce Anthony, played by Watchmen star Yahya abdul Mateen II. Throughout, he's tormented by Candyman's history. Get ready for another scary tale. Candyman. Artemis Fowl. Grown strong, son. And smarter than I ever imagined. Then take me with you. You're all I have now, Artie. There's just one very important thing I have to do. Inspired by Irish author Ewan Colfer's eight-part novel series, Walt Disney's Artemis Fowl tells the story of an adolescent criminal genius Artemis. He captures a vicious fairy, and attempts to harness her magical power, in a bid to rescue his family. Directed by Kenneth Branagh, the film follows an amalgamation of the plots of the first two novels. The trailer received some stick from die-hard fans of the books, who were concerned with the portrayal of Artemis. The character seems to be another young innocent child thrust into a world of fantasy and danger, and not the genius anti-hero they had grown to love from the books. Nonetheless, there is still a lot of excitement about the film adaptation of Colfer's best-selling novels, which he wrote in his bathroom. The impressive cast features Colin Farrell and Judi Dench, with newcomer Conor McPherson in the titular role. After the theatrical release was cancelled, Disney opted to skip the cinemas altogether, and now the film will premiere on Disney Plus on 12 June. I'm the next criminal mastermind. This is what they call greatness. Black Widow. I made mistakes. And a lot of enemies. The first movie of Phase 4 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe takes place before the events of Avengers Infinity War, when Natasha Romanoff, Scarlett Johansson, is on the run following the events of Captain America Civil War. Although we got a very vague insight into elements of Black Widow's past in Avengers Age of Ultron, there is still very little known about what happened in the Red Rumor Budapest, so hopefully flashbacks will fill in the gaps. Directed by Kate Shortland, the film features a cast of Florence Pugh, who plays Yelena, Stranger Things' David Harbour as Alexi and Rachel Weisz as Melina. If Marvel's recent run of films is anything to go by, this action-packed spy thriller should be a good time. Citizens, we are under attack from northern invaders. Their leader calls himself Ori Khan. Fights alongside a witch. No survivors. Next in line to get a Disney live action remake is the story of Mulan. The Emperor of China issues a decree that one man from each family must join the Imperial Army. Hua Mulan, the eldest daughter of an honored warrior, poses as a man to take her ailing father's place in the army. Chinese-American pop star Liu Yifei plays the titular role in the Nikki Carrari remake of the 1998 animation. Donnie Yen and Jason Scott Lee are in support. Jet Li plays the role of the Emperor. There's no denying that Disney live-action remakes are huge moneymakers for the biggest studio on the planet. However, the quality of these films has certainly varied. There is pressure on Mulan to perform. Fortunately for Disney, early reviews have been vastly positive. I'm Hua Mulan. I will bring honor to us all. Free Guy. Oh, 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 oh. Man, 
days. Am I right, Joe? You said it, guy. Yeah! Prepare for a video game movie unlike any other. Ryan Reynolds stars as the eponymous non-playable character Guy, who finds himself suddenly gaining autonomy and realizing that he's actually a video game character. The game itself which, itself, is a deadly GTA knockoff is being closed down, and it's up to Guy and one of the game's developers, played by Killing Eve's Jodie Comer, to save the day. Expect laughs aplenty when this one finally arrives. I'm not gonna be the good guy. Marbius. Should have died years ago. Why am I still here if not to fix this? I have a rare blood disease, and I'm running out of time. After the massive, and possibly unexpected, success of Venom, Sony's going full steam ahead on the Spider-Verse that may or may not be attached to the MCU, Tom Holland will be appearing in Spider-Verse movies, and we already know Vulture is in Morbius, so we're guessing so. Morbius centers on another troubled villain anti-hero this time it's Michael Morbius, a scientist with a rare blood disorder, whose experiments to find a cure, end up giving him a form of vampirism. Dallas Buyers Club Oscar winner Jared Leto is playing the so-called living vampire, so expect impressive levels of commitment from an actor who famously went method playing the Joker in Suicide Squad. Indeed, producer Matt Tolmich told ComicBook.com that we can expect a similar level of intensity and charisma and devotion to the character. Is worse than the disease. A Quiet Place Part 2 Following on from the events of A Quiet Place, the sequel follows the Abbott family, minus John Krasinski's Lee Abbott, as they continue their fight for survival in silence. They soon discover that the alien creatures that hunt by sound are not the only threats out there. This is one of the most highly anticipated horror movies this year, after the raving critical success of Part 1. The story follows Emily Blunt's Evelyn as she leads her family in this post-apocalyptic world. It's also likely that we will get flashbacks to fill in some details as to how this alien invasion began. Tenet. To do what I do, I need some idea of the threat we face. The director of Dark Knight, Inception and Dunkirk, Christopher Nolan, remains one of the few filmmakers in the planet with enough leverage to get a studio to spend hundreds of millions of dollars on a completely original franchise, and a rare filmmakers who have kept their original release date. His latest is Tenet, an evolving epic action from the world of international espionage. Unfortunately, the ever-reserved Nolan decided to play his cards even closer to his chest than usual. Because we know very, very little about Tenet. Time inversion whatever that means it's an important feature, and Black Klansman's John David Washington plays a James Bond-like leading role. The supporting cast includes Robert Pattinson, oh, Elizabeth Debicki, Simple Kapanian, Aaron Taylor Johnson, regular guests of Clemens Posey, Kenneth Branagh and Nolan Michael Caine. I mean, it never happened. The French Dispatch. Arthur Howitzer Jr. transformed the series of travelogue columns into the French Dispatch, a factual weekly report on the subjects of world politics, the arts, high and low. Wes Anderson's first film since 2018's Isle of Dogs tells the story of an American magazine based in a fictional French city. The publication decides to publish a memorial edition for its last issue, bringing to life the best three stories of the last decade. In classic Weird Anderson fashion, the movie features meticulously stylized shots, old-fashioned film techniques, and is relentlessly detailed. The cast is made up of some Wes Anderson favorites, Bill Murray, Tilda Swinton, Owen Wilson, and some big newcomers, Timothy Chalamet, Benicio Del Toro, Jeffrey You're Wright. Fired. Right. Don't cry in my office. The New Mutants. He said we had to run. The reason you survived. The New Mutants has been one of the most highly anticipated movies for over two years now. With an original release date in April 2018, it's a miracle that Josh Boone's The New Mutants will even see the light of day. 
The movie got fans excited and showed a lot of potential when Fox released the trailer in October 2017. It promised a psychological horror side to the X-Men universe which hadn't been explored. However, countless reshoots and Disney's acquisition of Fox caused several delays and rescheduled release dates. At present, the scheduled release date is 28 August 2020. The film follows young mutants being held in an isolated hospital for psychiatric monitoring. Doctors fear that they are a threat to themselves and to society as a whole. The movie boasts a stunning young cast consisting of Macy Williams, Anya Taylor-Joy, Charlie Heaton and Blue Hunt. Let's hope it's worth the wait. The King's Man away as the world burns. Son, the truth is the world is ruled by corruption and greed. We must do something. After Kingsman, the Secret Service announced the arrival of a fun new spy saga, follow up The Golden Circle fell a little flat. Now, director Matthew Vaughn gets a chance to reinvigorate the series, based on Mark Miller and Dave Gibbons' comic book series, by going back to the early 20th century and this prequel we're thinking of it as the League of Extraordinarily Tailored Gentlemen. A big advantage of visiting the origins of the titular undercover organization, is the chance to roll out a lot of famous actors playing even more famous historical figures. Ralph Fiennes, Liam Neeson as Lord Kitchener, Rhys Iphons as Rasputin, Gemma Arterton as Matahari, and Tom Hollander as King George V, Kaiser Wilhelm II, and Tsar Nicholas II The three monarchs were cousins in the spit of each other. Expect ridiculous gadgets, over-the-top action and plenty of innuendo. Why is it that boys are always so messy? Wonder Woman 1984 The sequel to Wonder Woman was almost inevitable after receiving the first film. After spending this film in World War I, we meet Diana in, as the title suggests, thanks to her immortality, she did not age a day. This time she will face the dangers of the Cold War, and, we are guessing, Rubik's Cubes in the new romantics, as well as a new villain in the form of Kristen Wiig's Cheetah. Star Gal Gadot and director Patty Jenkins are back in the game, as is Chris Pine, though in fact, her Steve Trevor couldn't get out of the first movie alive. Is he a figment of Diana's imagination or is there a better reason to appear somewhere in a mall very white trainers? We have to wait and see. Top Gun, Maverick. Retire. Despite your best efforts, you refuse to die. Thirty-four years after the original Top Gun, Tom Cruise feels the need to go back to the role that made him the biggest movie star on the planet. This time around, his Pete Maverick Mitchell is an instructor at the eponymous San Diego Flight School, and he's set to come into contact with trainee pilot Bradley Bradshaw, played by Whiplash star Miles Teller, who just happens to be the son of Maverick's late co-pilot Goose. The first Top Gun was a glorious example of 80s excess and style over substance, so don't expect the sequel to be a deep examination of a pilot's psyche. But with director Joseph Kaczynski having Tron, Legacy and Oblivion under his belt, the upcoming movie is bound to look spectacular. Meanwhile, the return of Val Kilmer as Iceman is a nice link to the original he can be our wingman anytime. Kind of headed for extinction. Maybe so, sir. But not today. No time to die. We just didn't get to yours yet. Director Kerry Fukunaga becomes the first American to take the reins of an official Bond movie with no time to die. Despite saying in 2015 that he would rather slash my wrists than play James Bond again, Daniel Craig is back in the main role for the last time. After the departure of original director Danny Boyle, an injury suffered by Craig, and now a global pandemic, the film has taken its time making its way to the big screen. Not many plot details of No Time to Die have surfaced, although it is known that Bond begins the movie living a tranquil life, out of service, in Jamaica. This is the case until, of course, he is recruited for a new mission, this time to rescue a kidnapped scientist. This leads him onto the trail of a new villain armed with dangerous tech. Lisa Du, Ralph Fiennes, Naomi Harris, Ben Wishaw and Jeffrey Wright all reprise their roles, with Bohemian Rhapsody's Rami Malek playing the villain. Do you think there are any exciting upcoming movies that we might have left out? Let us know in the comments section. Hey guys I hope you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe my channel.